Hi, I'm Neil Fu, the host of uh, NCT Tech Talk. We are back here again and we are very great to have a big guy here. Always I say that uh, he's my senior and also is a kind of god, you know, the god of semiconductor. Here we are, Dr. Sri Wong Siu Hai. And the president of uh, Malaysia Semiconductor Industry uh, Association, or in short, we call MSIA. So anything to do about Semicon or even E and E, that was Sri Wong, you know, it started from early 1970s, you know, even from the so-called the Asia Silicon Valley of uh, Penang by the past. So he started with the uh, Intel, we started with the uh, Dell. So today we want uh, you know, to get Dr. Sri Wong to share a bit of the future of the Semicon of uh, Malaysia. Dr. Sri Wong, welcome to NCT Tech Talk. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction okay. and uh, thank you for inviting me to this talk show. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sri, with the latest challenges of the post-pandemic uh, era, or even with the latest America President Biden's so-called the Biden's Chip Act, 52 billion USD. So, what do you think about all these uh, chips and uh, uh, aftermath of uh, pandemic development? How do you see the semiconductor of Malaysia being the locomotive of GDP of uh, Malaysia? How do you see this the future of this industry? Okay, uh, first of all, let me give you the state of the, of the semiconductor industry in Malaysia. Okay. Okay, uh, Malaysia is a significant player in the global semiconductor supply chain. It contributes to 7% of the semiconductor global trade. Wow. And also, 13% uh, of the assembly test capacities are located in Malaysia. So in, in uh, 2021, the export value was at uh, 4, 5, 6 billion and it grew 11% over, sorry, it grew 18% 18 okay. over 2020. Uh, right. And in 2022, the export value grew 30%. Right. So a significant growth. And not only that, the global semiconductor is also growing. You know, last year, it was at uh, 5, uh, 2020, uh, Two, it was at five more exceeded 500, 500 billion. I think wow. it's five 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 billion. Okay. And we expect it to grow. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, in in twenty twenty two by four percent. Okay. But it, however, in twenty twenty three, there is a minor correction, and we expect that growth to be slower, like by another four uh, percent. Okay, okay. So even with the, before the Biden's chip acts that they want to restructure mm. the manufacturing base of Semicon to attract the American uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, company to come back to America. So with that, just now you say the momentum is so strong. Mm. You know, we have been 7% in a certain aspect, 10% uh, in the certain market share and 18% growth. So do you think that this would be uh, even much stronger grow in Malaysia after restructuring of all these semicon uh, factory base. You know, as uh, last year, I think if we go back to last year, all last right. year in 2022, I call it a tale of two halves. Okay. The first half was very strong. Right. And the second half, they were we beginning to see corrections happening. Okay. Of course, the corrections happened even more in 2023. Mm -hmm. So even though the worldwide growth for semiconductor in 2022 was 4%. 2023, we, we are going to see a negative 4%. That is the okay. forecast. Okay. And this is due to a few things. One, inflation. Right. So much inflation and fear of the pending recession. Right. And not only that, the Ukraine-Russia war, uh. as well as this uh, correction in the consumer demand like iPhone and PCs. And, and also calls, the interest rate also? Uh, interest rate is going up. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, mm. That's uh, inflation. Right. So, um, that is causing the slowdown correction in the second half of the year. Okay. And you're going to see that correction continue. That's why so many big companies today, you know, uh, Micron and so on, you know, Intel and Broadcom have announced right. lower revenue you okay. know, uh, this year. But to see, as you say, I notice you keep saying correction. To me, correction could be a negative, but I think it's a positive mm. because you are you are reconciled something, 
that mm-hmm. uh, go too fast and inflated. Mm-hmm. And now the correction that at least you know we re resign our capacity mm-hmm. and in order to capture for the next opportunities. Mm-hmm. Right. Always I think that uh, perhaps we try to be uh, a bit layman terms. For the future development of the chips, can we say that the EV electrical vehicles mm-hmm. that we're going to transform all our cars, even yeah. ourselves, sure. the next car we buy could be EV. Mm-hmm. So inside have the chips. Yeah. So would that be the I say the correction? Then you move up with all well, this consumption. Uh, automotive uh, EV industry is only one of the industry. Right. Okay. So the number of chips that are used in cars in the EV is going to double. Right. Versus whatever we are using today. So therefore, the consumption of chips is going to increase. Mm. So if you look at the forecast, okay, what we are today exceeding 500 billion worldwide uh, semiconductor, uh, semi, uh, what we call it uh, revenue, okay, it will grow down to double by 2030 to more than one trillion. Mm. So you will see ups and down in terms of cycle, but the trend is continue to go upwards. Okay. So that's why. A lot of companies are preparing for that uptick, upturn. So today is a little downturn, and then hopefully there will be another upturn. Yep. So companies who are investing in Malaysia today, they are continue to invest. Okay. Okay. They are going to complete their project and be ready for the upturn. So that's a good news. Uh, not only that, in the US, they are also encouraging more companies to build factories onshore right. through their Chip Act. Okay. So when that factories are ready, the fabs are ready in two to three years. And hopefully that upturn will comes in, and then we will see further growth again for the semiconductor industry. Yeah, good news. Good news for yeah. Malaysia. So always we say that Malaysia is the attraction or the gateway of ASEAN as the Maida mm-hmm. slogan. So how would be the strategy, you know, to mm-hmm. capture this opportunity for Malaysia? I think Malaysia has continued to build their ecosystem, to strengthen the supply chain, uh, have 50 years of experience already. Okay. So with that 50 years experience, they know the industry very well, from at the low level of operations to the management of all the factories and the business. All right. So that will help to attract even more investment to the country and more expansion in the country. Okay. Of course, we have our own challenges, but we have that skill sets to move forward and face the challenges uh, ahead. Okay. Besides the country or Maidas, all these uh, po- good policy and uh, incentive uh, to attract the FDI. So, what do you think that in uh, Semicon or E and E, what we need the most, uh, so that we get ourselves prepared? Is it talent or is it the uh, incentive or some other things? I think we have to do a multiple of things, huh? All right. The currently the most important one is talent. Talent. Uh, there is a war on talent worldwide, okay. global war on talent. Everybody right. is trying to attract the best talent to their country. Right. The US is doing so. Singapore is doing so. And can you imagine even Taiwan and China try to hire our Malaysians? All right. So that war on talent is global. Okay. So Malaysia has to be prepared to also play in this game and try to retain our people and at the same time attract Malaysians back and use other countries' talent. We need a strategy to also use other countries' talent because other countries are using our talent. So right. there, there is a gap yep. as they attract our talent away. We need to fill in that gap. Okay, so, so it's a the kind of globalize of talent ship. So that's yeah. why we have to groom our, our talents, and yeah. also we need other people, other people's talent, talents other countries' talent Canada, to right. come to Malaysia to help in our growth of the semiconductor industry. That's great. So besides so, semicon, we are talking about industry 4.0, yeah. the nine key pillars: AI, yeah. IoT, yeah, yeah. and uh, automation. Mm-hmm. So especially IoT in your semicon mm-hmm. uh, industry, that you use a lot of devices. So yeah. you need size. You need yeah. computers, uh, yeah. talents uh, to to do that. Mm-hmm. So, do you think that Industry 4.0 also would uh, glide us uh, all the way for yes. our semicon industry yeah. in Malaysia? You know, in order to be globally competitive, we need to embrace Industry 4.0 and okay. embark on this journey in order to compete. So, if you don't embrace and embark on the journey, others will. So, we have to get into the business of data analytics, AI, and other. Digital transformation, so to speak, of the manufacturing and the business processes, so that we can compete with the rest of the world. Okay. So that's another element that's important. The other one that will strengthen our Malaysia's case will be the, our ecosystem. Okay. Whereby we have built not just assembly tests, capabilities in the country. We also have EMS, medical device, 
and all the supporting um, businesses to support manufacturing. Uh, we also very strong in automation, right? Auto, especially automation for semiconductor industry. And these companies can serve the uh, other companies worldwide, right? You know, and become a global uh, business. Okay. So very we, we 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 have a very strong uh, what I call it uh, the ecosystem ecosystem that we can attract further investment to the country. Yes, yes. They say always uh, as uh, we say that you know uh, the private sector, the industrialists that they are always ready, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, if we can do it with uh, the public uh, policy incentives, they would be good. So to see, we always talk about FDI, right? So foreign direct investment. What about our local guys, our local enterprises? So, what is your what is your your take on this? You know, in Malaysia, in the early days, have taken the strategy of attracting FDIs to the country. Right. Because at that time, our un- unemployment rate is high, mm. and so attracting FDIs would help solve some of the unemployment issues in the early 70s. Okay. And we have done very well, and we have keep moving and growing and growing and growing to new technologies that we have brought in, and we continue to bring in FDIs. Now we have Malaysian talent who are now really capable. So some of them have come out. For example, the automation. They came out to start their own companies, and some of them have become global companies. Wow. So automation strong. Okay. okay. However, we need to build in other areas and go up the value chain. Mm. Like in example, in IC design. IC design. Embedded system design. Mm-hmm. Assembly uh, packaging development and so on. Okay. We need local companies to come out. And be a player lo- as a local company, so that they can they can grow and become global companies, and that is an area I think we can strengthen right. the uh, our ecosystem with local Malaysian companies. companies, and hopefully the government in some ways can help these companies to come to uh, start up and to grow together with the uh, FDIs. Okay, we always say semicon or E and E. Maybe you use uh, one sentence or even a few words to describe about E and E. Okay, well, E and E industry or any industry actually today will have to use semiconductor. So right. semiconductor will be the foundation, I call it, okay. for all uh, applications. Okay. Right. Uh, so from semiconductor, then you have systems. Right. Okay. Like so, you build a PCB, mm. and then you build a product like an iPhone or a computer. So all of that will use semiconductor. Modules, systems, and then end product. Okay, we say this is a golden era of uh, you know the reindustrialization of Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So E and E, as you say, golden. The E and E, as I say, is the golden goose of Malaysia. Yeah. So Malaysia need to take effort and time to nurture it and okay. grow it because it is going to be extremely important All for right. the country. So E and E is a golden goose, golden goose of uh, Malaysia. Yeah. So yes. we have to <laughs> groom it more eggs. And uh, you know, then we can yeah. we can uh, uh, have a wide spread of uh, development. Yes, and you know, our trade surplus, the E and E industry contri- uh, contributes seventy eight percent of the total trade surplus. Oh, that's very significant. Seventy eight percent of the trade surplus, surplus from from E and E. That's in twenty twenty two. In twenty twenty two, E and E means electrical and electronic. Means at home you use your whatever your handphone, your TV, your radio. Uh, this day you use the radio, no. So we have cameras and things like that. So that is called E and E. Even the vacuum cleaner. Yes. So seventy eight percent surplus. Trade surplus. Yes. Trade surplus. Doctor Sri, one more question that uh, uh, I need your guidance, like. Okay, FDI has come into this country or even in the region that very much on their own choice of um, factory base. Mm. So they find for a, a, a piece of land or even they find for a factory, they set up their uh, their operation here. But now, you now the private sector have to do something innovative, especially with the industrial parks. So what do you think and what do you expect with the industrial park, especially with the private-driven projects that mm-hmm. what do you see that is the most important of the industrial park and also the service content of the industrial park? As you know, Malaysia has grown leaps and bounds since 1972 when semiconductor came into the country. Right. So and you were the pioneer, right? You were I'm one of the pioneers. Okay. Mm. Um, but you can see with that all the growth through the years, Malaysia actually is running out of land. Oh. Especially in the key industrial park areas, so like in Penang, right? You know, like in Kulim, and many other places. 
So therefore, the private industrial parks will be a good complement to the government industrial park, so to speak. Right. Okay. And there are many countries are doing this already, okay. and Malaysia is should embark on the journey as well. Now, this industrial park, if you can make it smart, make it attractive, right? Uh, ESG friendly. Wow. Okay. You know, uh, and uh, have an ecosystem that can help the uh, talents. Right. To uh, work in an environment where they feel uh, it is very exciting. Okay. Uh, it is friendly, easy, and don't have time wastages. You know, as they work in the park. Right. That will be very attractive to them. So in a way, they just would as bring their suitcase, their expertise, come mm. into the industrial park, and then they start to build their factory and they operate with the private uh, uh, driven uh, industrial park that, as you said, yeah. you know, uh, get ready the services, get ready the ESG. Yeah. Now, I think ESG is not an optional. I yeah. think it's quite compulsory because yes. of the uh, carbon-free uh, economy and things like mm -hmm. that. And of course, uh, with the talent. So mm -hmm. that is what we're going to mold the yeah. industrial park uh, in, uh, in Malaysia. All right, I think um, that is very fruitful uh, sharing with uh, the two, three on that uh, as well, you know, uh, NCT Tech Talk uh, with the group also, they, as, there is a, a, a smart industrial park that, you know, contains many, many uh, strategy services and talent. So I think with the stewardship of uh, Dr. Sri Wong, always I say, he's a captain of the industry, especially the um, high impact, high value industry, in which that, uh, you know, they have a, a very uh, high value kind of uh, production that they can pay to the talents. They say, I think for this country, we need more science students, computer science students, and of course, uh, some other skills that, you know, we hope with this uh, semicon industry can bring up the general income of our nation and good for the next generation. I think with that, uh, we appreciate the uh, Dr. Sri uh, pre precious time that uh, I've dated him so many times. You know, finally I got his time. I just have a slot, a small slot of the 30 minutes that he's running for the next meeting. And uh, he has retired in a way that, but he's not retiring yet because he's leading the industry uh, together with the, the country, like, you know, working uh, together with Maida, with MITI, with the HRDC, the talent, the talent development. So uh, with that, uh, Dr. Sri, thank you very much again. And we hope to see you some other time that uh, we really need your, your, your guidance and your leadership. Thank you thank very, you very much. much. Thank you. And uh, bye for uh, everyone that uh, we see you in the next uh, episode then. Thank you. Bye.